uh, we'll see how it all. Um, okay, got it. I just got a message saying Le this meeting yeah. is being live streamed. So yes. I think you got it. Yeah. Okay. So um, hoping everybody uh, is eager to hear what Carl has to say. So I'm going to do a bit of a, um, sorry, an introduction to him. Got it. I just got a message. All right. So just a quick introduction to Carl um, Stanley. So Carl is really a master of architecture tooling. Um, and among other things, Carl, so I don't want to limit um, your right. skills, right? Um, it, he's just someone that most of us cannot compete with. And I feel that he has a great, um, you know, way of teaching, a way of helping people really get into the tooling side of architecture. Um, the whole reason why I got Carl in in the first place or while while we mutually uh, agreed to work together was because there's theory in architecture and then there's practice in architecture. And so although Carl comes from an enterprise architecture perspective, for those who have been going through the course will know that we have a particular um, meta model that we use for business architecture. And there's a lot of similarities for um, you know, Archimate and, and various other meta models. So um, welcome, Carl. I'm pretty sure that everybody will be super happy to hear what you have to say and uh, looking forward to, yeah, uh, seeing what's, what's going on. So I'll, push, right. I'll put it over to your side. Okay. So thank you very much. That's very high praise um, <laughs> for the morning. <laughs> but um, I, I'll um, thank you for that. So what I thought we would do, I guess just quickly this morning was you know, to say good morning. I'm here early um, on a 7 a.m. I'm over in Sydney on Sydney time. So um, wherever you guys are, welcome along um, to this little this little session. So on screen, you should see something that looks like a share that says business architecture in practice. Okay, so that's part of my um, my mission. So as as um, Deirdre said. Um, over the over the little while that I've been doing um, IT and enterprise architecture and, and those sort of things, um, this has been my motivation. Um, what you'll see on screen there is a, a what they call a business motivation model. So just to introduce myself a little bit, um, it's always been to give um, enterprise architecture insights to aspiring professionals doing theory and practice. So that's caused me to do a few different things through the career. Um, so pick up training skills as a Microsoft certified trainer, pick up training skills in, um, in Australia, you can do certifications like assessment workplace training. So doing these sort of models, doing these sort of uh, work and doing it visually has been always something that um, I've, I've done. And it, I picked the hard part where it's the here's, the, here's the theory. So then how do you do it sort of stuff? Um, so that's caused me to go back and forth with um, consulting and training and also working along with tool providers. So in the architecture space, um, there's meta models and there's tools that you can use. Um, so I've, I've partnered with a few different companies and have been able to do these, um, these uh, visuals and things that you're, you're about to see for people um, in the market. So I've been practicing basically what I, what I plan to preach. Okay, so um, that's me. So maybe just to give a little bit more context to the group. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, Carl's looking at practical things that are available free, but he has um, worked with Lean IX, um, various other models, right? So yep. it's not limited, but we wanted to, well, he particularly wanted to ensure that anyone could practice architecture and not have a barrier to tools. So just thought mm -hmm. I'd chip that in yeah no perfect yeah so definitely trying to make sure that um, it's accessible so there's no real massive barriers so you can get the insights that you need so that's me on screen there putting theory together so those are the training certifications um togaf certified and archimate certified and then moving over into the uh, when you put some of these badges together you become an enterprise architecture modeler um you know and if i had to use 
analogies, we model things so that we can, um, you know, test and test things in practice. Um, so why do you model something in a, in a um, wind tunnel? You want to see how the, the, um, the car or the thing in the wind tunnel is going to behave under certain conditions. And we could liken that to our own enterprises, um, our own business analysis, our own business architecture. We need to test it and see the impacts that will happen um, and then call, cause, you know, strategic um, change, which is what we're trying to get to. And BizBot has all of those good things in it um, from theory and practice. So that's a little bit <clears throat> just about me. And then I thought, you know, we'd have a quick chat about oh, um, our journey. So as professionals, what are we doing? <laughs> so it, depending on what position that, that you're in, we're always on a, some sort of learning journey. We're always on some sort of um, journey at work um, to you know, do some sort of uh, impact analysis or we're trying to give wide insights to, to, um, to customers. Um, and then have them do some sort of strategic change in this space. So I don't know if you've seen this before, but this is actually in the um, what they class in the knowledge management uh, field as a journey that we go on. And so when when you start a journey, in, in this case, business architecture or enterprise architecture, yeah, we start with a, little, a whole bunch of information. So who, what, when, all those sort of things. And then eventually, when can you say that you're actually knowledgeable about something? So if I illustrate it this way, um, how if I took my car to a, a mechanic and that I said there was a certain problem and there's some context around it, and he turned to me and said, yeah, I've never heard that before. I've never seen that happen. Um, would I be likely to give my car to him? Probably not. But if if I turn if you turned around and said, look, here's a here's a screwdriver and I'll stick it onto the block of the engine and I can hear that this is happening there and there's a there's a um, air supposed to go with the engine here and the piston's supposed to do that and all these and he knows how it's all connected, then I'm likely to you know trust him with my car to fix it. So we as professionals are trying to get to this sort of knowledge place and how um, everything's hanging together. So enter. Um, business architecture and enterprise architecture. So we, once we have these, all this information connected, we can start to give out those insights and hopefully give help our, our stakeholders with the, um, wise decisions that actually have some sort of impact um, at the, and so these, these little demonstrations that we're gonna go through, um, I'm showing you some toolings and everything. We're really trying to get to um, uh, the impact and the, the wise decisions that we want to make. So that's our journey, right? We're going through that on subjects. We're going through that in our workplaces. We're going through that when we come to enterprise architecture oh, and business architecture. So that's us. So why is the BizBoc meta model important? <laughs> so if we're in, on a previous slide, we talked about um, the dots and connecting up all the dots. So if you look at, uh, at this sort of slide here on the, on my left, there's a business architecture knowledge base, right? So if we've done BizBoc and we've gone into the BizBoc theory and those sort of things, you'll see that those are the domains um, that we use to um, look at our work. So we use our, you know, our organization, we use our capabilities, we use our information and our value streams and we connect those, all those things up, right? So that we can, we're knowledgeable about um, how our enterprises are working. And then we work on business scenarios, then we work on business blueprints. And so in line with that, the BizBoc, um, the Business Architecture Guild has put together a case um, study and it talks about um, a, a, a trip of a um, company that's, uh, you know, a logistics company, a transportation company doing a trip, right? So we're basically connecting up all the things to make a customer have a trip. Um, and do it successfully. So in our little demonstrations, um, you'll see some of those things. But we're connecting up with our meta model, these relationships, and then we get our cross, map, cross mappings. So the BizBoc talks a lot about cross mappings. Um, so yeah, this is why it's important. We can say that we're knowledgeable and then we can go those insights and we have a structured way. So we go from unstructured 
to structured, a structured way of putting together our insights. And you'll notice that um, we've put this in a tool, right? So in um, free to the market, as, as, as Idris said, um, in, no barrier to entry, uh, free to market is our tools that do modeling. Okay, so Arky, I don't know whether you've played with it, um, but there is there is a um, a cross mapping between the Archimate meta model and the Bizbox meta model, um, and that has been um, done in practice and published um, for a little while. So we go through that mapping, and so you'll notice that in the previous slide, some of these relationships and things are a little bit different. So in the in the um, the training that we do, uh, we make sure that it's very clear on the, the differences. So it's not to, not to worry too much about that. But once you have your, um, your, your business architecture modeled, um, and what we focus on really um, are those core domains like capability, value stream, you'll see there, um, business um, organization, which, is, which are your actors and things. So we go through all of that. Now, I guess the added benefit of using some of these um, modeling tools is under the covers, they connect all these dots. And you'll see that on screen there, you've got um, zero, one, two, three, four, five. These are all different viewpoints or views of that meta model. And when you actually do the work and then everything's connected under the covers and then you can do your, get your insights. So that's one benefit. Um, it's not just flat 2D where, you, where you're um, looking at a, a Visio diagram and all you can see is a box in a box actually has more more information it has it has more knowledge about it um, and the other added benefit here is um, see these little um, icons on the palette here on the side these ones are in the blue are for applications and these ones in the green are for um, technology so and obviously over time um, strategies will go one way and plans will go one way and then a lot of times IT will go another way or your technologies or your components. So what we're trying to aim to do is to, to put them in line. So underneath each of these things like capability, you know, people process information tools to get a job done um, is our resources that you use. So wouldn't it be good if you can connect up all those dots as well? So you get your business and your IT aligned and then your plans are looking like a little bit more successful, right? So, that's one thing that um, we concentrate on in some of the of the material, and I do it hands on um, labs, and I'll show you how to how to drive all these things. And so, in this little presentation this morning, I won't take too long, but um, I'll show you some of this in the tools themselves. All right, so that's that's one of the tools that we use, and then good old um, Excel. So again, readily available to lots of um, stakeholders, um, lots of practitioners. But this is this is the juice, right? So now that you start to get all of the technology components, all the all the business capabilities, all the value streams, and everything connected up, you need to analyze, right? You need to get down to a, a lower level and analyze the detail. Um, and a lot of these tools will do that that for you, like LeanIX and um, the rest of the you know Orbis and the rest of these other tools will do some of these matrices for you um, straight out of the box. By using these fruit tools, I actually show you some tricks <laughs> on how to um, connect up a model that is in in um, in Archie and then build it into a matrix so that you can actually do some analysis. And I'll show you that um, in our little demonstrations. But you can see there we have a meta model which are at with application components, capabilities, uh, value streams, all connected up, and where they where they are connected to another. You start to see you start to see um, numbers. You start to see counts of things, which can immediately give you insights. Say, so, okay, well, there's lots of things connecting capability to value stream, as you would expect. Okay, and then well, what technologies are under the covers, which is something else you would want to learn and capture structured in a structured way. Okay, so I'll show you some of those tricks. You'll see queries and connections and and those sort of stuff. Um, we do some fun stuff with Power Query. So we get our hands a little bit dirty um, and you get your hands on all these things. So yeah, you really want to get your hands on not only aligning capability um, in business architecture in the BizBoc model, 
but you also want to uh, connect up technologies. So let's go through a little bit of a demonstration. And we'll start off with the um, tool that you just saw on the screen. And so this is this is what comes along with the training, right? And what's what's interesting about this here is you'll notice we have our 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 model, okay? So on the side here is a is a um, a view of all of the componentry that's in our model. So um, what we've prepared earlier is here is the meta model with some of the the things that you're seeing here, right? And where it comes down to capability. Um, we've also pulled out five viewpoints, right? So in the case study, there's a discussion on looking at certain um, viewpoints from certain stakeholders' points of view, um, and we build them out into um, artifacts, like little things like this, and you'll start to see all of your all of your detail get connected up. Now this might look a little bit, you know like a bit of a spaghetti mess. But when you start to look at the relationships and you boil it down, um, you get some real insights. And then, so I go through some of those things um, in, the, in, the, um, in the training. So you'll see here, here are a few viewpoints and I've put an added viewpoint in and they're all based around the BizBoc domains. So information, value stream capability and connecting up and getting those cross mappings happening so you can do your insight. So that's just a little bit of a, a tool, a view of the tool. And the other, the other one I'll point out here is the, we also start to connect up resources. So you'll see based on certain capabilities, certain resources that are under the covers and you'll start to see them all connect up here using the BizBoc meta model and the Archimat model. So that's kind of cool. I, you get lots of insights. Um, and once you go through this level of discipline, um, it, it just focuses you to get to the, um, the value that your stakeholder needs. So that's the, that's the little tool there. Now, the other tool I'll, I'll point out here is our good old Excel. So one thing you can do is go export these, this whole model to a CSV file, which is kind of which is kind of cool, and they give you a few CSV files. They don't just give you one; they give you three. They give you one that's elements, one that's um, properties of those elements. Elements being your business capabilities and your your whole model, and then um, some properties. So what you're seeing on screen there is that basic uh, model, but I've put it into a pivot table. So this is this is the actual all the detail in the model, right? So you're seeing source and you're seeing target, right? You're seeing the type and the type is basically the meta model, right? So we've basically just tagged up all the stuff that we put in the model with a meta model, right? Data about data. Right? So um, then you start to see, okay, well in the model, this is connected to that. Left is connected to right. Source is connected to target. So now that we're disciplined and we're doing relationships we can actually go and create um, some real insights and see how how things are um, being impacted you know, put it into your own um, context um, i've had plenty of stakeholders like general managers who are, um, have to put their hand on their heart and say um, all my projects are going to go in um, and the business is going to have no problem um, but he has to go through a level of science and this is Doing this sort of modeling and asking certain stakeholders certain questions, you quickly uncover that there's a, um, a bottleneck somewhere, could be in the technology space, could be in the project itself. Um, and yeah, the only way you can get there and prove it with a level of science is to um, go down this sort of discipline, um, I've found. It helps you with doing rough orders of magnitude and, and costings as well, as you start to see, well, these are the real impacts um, of doing this, these strategies and plans. So what you're seeing there is, again, here's the X and Y axis. Um, you get a lot of this stuff with, the, with the, um, the training that we're going through. And you'll see, okay, all of a sudden we've got capability here. 
All right. And we've got capability connected to value stream and which, which value stream is it, is it connected to, you know, where you see a one, there's a relationship. Okay. So that's just a, a quick, um, show and tell on some of these things in our model that there's 137 relationships and I won't bore you with too much of the detail, but you'll see we've put a pivot table together and there's, um, also, which is quite interesting, which is quite cool, um, is um, Excel has Power Query where it can go and find files, pull the information out. You do a few, you do a few little transformations. So I've got some connections to some those files, and we do a merge and append, and you see how to do all that as well, which is kind of which is kind of cool. Um, if you like this sort of <laughs> this sort of thing. All right, so those are the two real tools and um, and this is helping us go along our journey um, into um, knowledgeable insights. So low barrier to entry, straight in, here's some modeling, show you how to do the modeling, and then show you how to use some of the tools. So that's my little uh, demo of a few pieces. Now, Let's just click back here. And so in summary, there's a couple of, of points. Right? What you're seeing on screen there are actionable insights, right? So we as, as business architects, business analysts, PMs, BAs, EAs, SAs have to do this level of analysis and say, hand on heart, this is what works and this is how it's connected. And this is, this is what the impact will be when you do a, um, a piece of work. All right, so in the in the class that we put together, you have this information, which is a matrix of things, right? Which is basically two lists of things connected up by relationships. You have an association with the BizBock, um, and you can have you have free tooling. So you put together these sort of artifacts. So you'll see as we go through our viewpoints in the case study, these are the artifacts that you're gonna you're gonna see, and then that little visualizer thing I showed you before quite use, useful to show little impacts and these relationships are, are strongly typed. So you, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, and then we I show you how to filter these, um, the model on certain relationships and things that you see there. Um, and you'll be able to hopefully, most definitely give um, uh, valuable insights to your stakeholders. So that's pretty much um, the punchline, we want to, we want to be able to do those actionable insights for our customers. Um, and in, we've prepared a little course to help put together all of these, um, meta model objects, connecting all the dots and extending it, not just past, not just past in, not just the business architecture part, but also past that into um, lining business and IT together, which is kind of cool. So that's that's all I really had to had prepared to speak chat about this morning. Um, just wanted to show you what we prepared and um, in practice. So here's what you can expect um, in the class, right? So that's the little um, icon that you have for the class. Um, this is sort of these are the things I've done, which is um, theory and practice, and um, we want to try apply that theory um, with some freely available tools in the market. Um, and it takes you through. We go through all those viewpoints, ensuring that you understand that how the theory works. Um, and then we do the demonstrations of each of the viewpoints. So you'll see in the list of things, there's five different viewpoints. And then there's an assignment at the end. Um, it's already in in the model. You just have to you do a little bit of modeling just to get your hands dirty. And then we then you have some time. Um, and if you have questions, I can definitely help you um, and give you other insights um, along the way. So that's that's the class. Um, and if Deirdre has some other things that she wants to add in there, feel free. Um, and we have a little bit of a, a QA time um, if you'd like mm -hmm. to have a chat. Spot on time. Um, yeah, so those 
uh, familiar people that I see in the group. Great to see you um, again. So one of the things that's been happening over the last probably year and a half, two years um, of doing business architecture was this question around how do I practically apply it? And if you were like me originally, I found the tooling quite a big barrier um, to, you know, being able to actually deliver, um, you know, architecture. And it actually isn't, but it looks overwhelming. So Carl and I spoke about this and I said, well, how would you actually get the tools? Um, you know, how would you show people how to do it? So give them a template, basically, that's already populated um, and explain how that template relates to all of those chapters that we have in um you know, the training, so chap modules 1 to 10, which is around capabilities, value streams, organizational charts, etc. So what Carl's done is he's um, created a model showing you um, how to use it, do a couple of tweaks to it, and then uh, meet up with Carl. So that's what we, we've we done with our, um, our training. It was just really a gap that I wanted someone to really deep dive and there was no nobody um better than Carl to actually do that there you go thank you <laughs> all right so um without making this any kind of you know sales if you have any question around the actual um you know what what would you like to know in terms of what would the practice be of the Bisbach uh, meta model um, what is your viewpoints in terms of uh, Excel versus Archie? Uh, where would you want to begin? Um, we can provide you with some insight that is not related to anything that we're doing. But if you have questions, now's a good time to ask um, and share it with the rest of the group. So you don't have to limit anything to what we've spoken about today. But if you have tooling questions around architecture, now's a good time to ask. I always have such a such a quiet group. <laughs> I don't know if everyone's at, at work and do, doesn't want to ask, you know, something. So I have a question. Hello. Hello. Am I, hi. Hey, and what's the difference between this course and the Archimate Masterclass? So this one, this one's focused more on the business architecture. Um space and it's a practical course uh, more so it practical. is quite different yeah it's so yeah, the Archimate cool. one is yeah. is is for certification um so you yeah. you can get certification vouchers um and this one is far more practical uh with demonstrations and how to use mm -hmm. the biz block and connect the dots okay cool. that sounds very awesome yeah i Thank also you. um just wanted to add thomasina that um you know, when we first looked at the Archimate, um, one of the things that we looked at was, you know, the certification. But Archi, um, Archimate kind of cer certification is around the notation. It's around the language. Um, whereas what B arcs need is less of the notation, just understanding how the notation matches, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that makes sense. And I like the, the way this you're taking this forward to the analysis of Excel as well, because I'm just seeing other architects do that at work at the moment, and it's something that I hadn't even attempted myself. So, yeah, mm. really cool to see related back to the BizBock um, meta model. Yeah. That's awesome. I also think that with, um, you know, what we wanted to do with this is actually get people to work on an actual case and then have one-on-one -on -one session with Carl as to how well they're doing this, you know? So is it something that they actually, um, you know, that you actually need to go, I didn't know how to add this and I didn't know how to put, you know, um, whatever the Excel spreadsheet into this kind of format and can I use Power BI as part of, you know, those kind of questions. Um, so first try, have a look, practice, then ask questions. I always think that's better, you know, start with something and then go from there. Yeah. So yeah. that was the idea. So if I, if I want to just add there that we have a, a training approach, it's sort of like 
um, with some of the customers I've worked for in the past that's worked uh, well is a C1, then you do one, and then you come back and you teach one. So that's the way that that's the way a lot of medical practitioners will work. They'll see mm-hmm. something, then they'll be doing it, and they'll have a, a trainer saying, "Well, you know, have we have we looked at it this way? C1, do one, teach one is a method." Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I've made sure that we've you know pulled out the key points, highlighted um, this is what we just did, um, and then you get your hands on the tools. And then um, at the end of the at the class, um, have a go, and then um, we can have a chat. And I'm freely available. I'm on. Um, I think I think um, Deirdre will send out links of things, but I'm on Calendly, um, so you can book in some time uh, with me in various time zones. So um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. So I'll be online, ready ready to roll. So you my know day where job. These gamers, they up all all times of the night. <laughs> You just have, that's how it is, right? That's right. So when you're in the online world. So I, I um, so on my day job, basically, um, I'm working with um, tool suppliers like uh, LeanIX, Orbis, iServer and things with, with customers up and down the eastern seaboard um, and over into New Zealand. So this is part of the, the job is doing this and seeing this work and taking requirements from customers and creating matrices of things and diagrams of things so that they can uh, report back to their senior management. So mm-hmm. I'm getting my hands on it all the time. Um, and um, it's been, it's been great working along with Agora um, doing that certification piece. Um, that was a big piece and um, took a lot of, a lot of doing. So um, it's been good. And now we get to do some practical stuff, which is, which is, you know, targeted and a bit, you know, a bit short mm-hmm. and sweet. So hmm. it's not. Um, so, Carl, just a question. Um, mm-hmm. When did you start with Archimates and uh, what tool do you love the most? <laughs> 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 so um, I've been an enterprise, I've been in architecture for many, many, um, many, many years, all the way back to Microsoft sort of I'd train it back in 2001. Um, mm-hmm. And always as, as teaching some of this stuff and doing it, had a certain set of viewpoints that would just ring with um, any stakeholder. So I'd, you go in a room with a pen and a whiteboard and you say, this is client, this is presentation, this is application, this is data, this is how it works. And everyone sort of fed off that, which, which as an architect, you need to be um, able to do so that when you're in the room, people are all working on the same page um, and you're going to... Um, answer a whole bunch of questions without even having to go one by one. Here's the picture. Here's the blueprint. This is how we go. Mm-hmm. So that was quite interesting in enterprise architecture speak. Um, we had to get across rational systems architect and all that sort of jazz, which was a, which was a bit archaic. Um, and as, as I've progressed, so back, I want to say 2004, um, in the early versions of Archimate, I started looking at the modeling um, and it was, you know, it was a blueprinting for blueprinting sake, and it was very difficult for people to uh, use. And um, so it's come a long way. So I've been, I'd say, way back then. Um, and my favorites are things that are um, easily palatable, right? So this, some of this can be a little bit, um, you know, daunting with a lot of different, you know, things connecting up and, you know, it's not the easy place to be. So one of the tools I use at the moment, um, and they'll love me for saying it, is, is LeanIX. It has a, a, a nice meta model and it has an easy um, uh, usable, there's a usability about it um, that makes it quite easy. So you get your lists of things, your matrices of things, your diagrams. Some of the diagrams will pop up automatically uh, if you know how to do the data flow diagramming mm-hmm. and things. Um, and it's not too low a level of detail like some modeling languages um, like UML. Um, so mm-hmm. really, Archimate and um, LeanIX and those, these sort of things, uh, um, they don't get too caught down in the weeds and you're just at the right space to be able to prove a level of science and give back to your stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Carl, I have a quick question. Hello. Henry here. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned you mentioned Lina X. Um, yes. um, one of the 
the criteria um, uh, that the big pop prescribes when we assess tools is that um, it's alignment to the meta model, which you just kind of walk through. Yeah. But Lean Ags doesn't support the um, the um, big book, uh, the, uh, the Gill meta model. Interesting. Um, uh, they actually, you can make your own fact sheets. And so there is, there are, there is um, a link between the two. So you, that does address capability for sure. Um, they do have value stream um, ideas, um, mm -hmm. but you can create your own um, objects. So when I say fact sheets, I mean objects that connect and relate to. So you can actually express um, the BizBock meta model inside um, inside Lean um, So the, um, yeah. So the way you actually um, with Aki, for example, the how you show or you know, programmatically and automatically the connections between mm -hmm. the objects and the elements um, in Aki, for example. Yeah. When you create these fact sheets in Linux, for example, do you, you know, does that happen programmatically or automatically? Yes. Are you, okay. So you, you actually have access to create, to configuring the meta model. So I can okay. go into admin right now in a tool and I can make a relationship and make my own fact sheet and say, this is my, this is my object called value stream. And okay. this is going to connect this way to those, um, to those underlying um, cross mappings like organization um, information okay. and those and value stream. Okay. And you spoke about a course which you guys run. Um, do you need to take this course? Say that again. Uh, and like a, a training course which you you spoke to a moment ago. Yeah. There was a lady who asked about that a moment yep. ago. Yeah. Yeah. So do you take um, do you take one or the other? But on which of them do you do first? Would you recommend you do first? So. I would ask, it depends on what you're trying to apply. Um, if you need, so if you'd like certification, definitely um, go for the um, certification masterclass. Um, I do do a little bit of a um, theory in, in the, a little bit of practice in there. But if you're specifically wanting to connect up um, to the, to the BizBoc um, and, and um, you have a little bit of a background in the BizBoc certification, um, mm -hmm. I would go for the, the, okay. um, this one, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I, I think just to so clarify good. that, if you are looking to learn about business architecture and going for, you know, BizBuck, then you would do a combination because that's kind of what it's been designed for. But if you've already yeah. gone through all of that, then, yeah, mm -hmm. just go for either the practice or for Archimate certification, like whichever one okay. works. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Eric. No worries. Chris? Yeah, hi, Deidre and uh, Carl. Um, yeah, I've been uh, using some of the Archimate and or, or even Archi now as well uh, with a, a number of clients. Um, nice. And what I've had to do is actually run teaching sessions with the clients to help mm -hmm. them understand the language uh, and mm -hmm. the modeling notation. And with, what I've done is actually taken a subset. Um, and the area that we've been exploring more and more now with our clients is around um, business services, how to model business services. Mm. Uh, so they get more visibility around what's the value that IT is providing me uh, from all that technology stack and mm -hmm. how does that business service then align to that technology and then to the business capability and the value that I'm giving to my customers. So we're actually taking those notations, a subset for the service, for the capability, mm. for the value, for cost, um, and then put that into a PowerPoint template and allow the business to actually model their own services now. So they're becoming more comfortable with doing that. And then they write a description around that. And now we're then importing that information into a uh, Power BI dashboard um, and then hooking it up with um, op monitoring tools so they can then get end user experience uh, um, metrics coming in and run uh, CSAT reports uh, out to their customers wow. to try and understand <laughs> whether the services are yeah, meeting the value uh, that they've, mm. they've targeted to try and achieve. But it also allows the architecture team to normalize or rationalize um, the business services that are sitting around the capability, mm. saying, well, you know, why have I got two applications that are doing customer management you know, um, or two 
to applications doing asset management or something like that. So they can look at them mm -hmm. consolidating those. And it helps with the cloud migration as well. Mm -hmm. The technology team talk of workloads, but to the business, it's a business service. So they need to understand uh, the object, the, the impact it's going to have once they move to the cloud and particularly with all the interfaces, uh, they're able to provide that information, assess what that impact will be and how they're going to manage the um, the cost of that going forward. Um, so, so that's it's very, quite a very simple tool. tooling, right? So yeah, very simple. Like it's yep. just the way that you've put all of those steps together that gives, I suppose, your stakeholders a good vi visualization of what they need to know, not necessarily yeah. everything they need to know. Well, that's right. The key, the key thing was mm. basically is, is to keep it simple, intuitive, and mm. informative. So give me all the information that I need, but just enough information. I don't need to know all the details around the technology stack, but just mm. tell me what it is. And then I've got them to map that to the CI. So now the configuration and the CMDB for their service now is then aligned to the model, which is aligned to the enterprise architecture. So suddenly mm. things start to harmonize when you start to do projects. People are not yeah. falling over stuff and finding stuff that, Oh, where did that come yeah, from? Yeah, it's all those shadow that that systems and shadow yeah. projects. Yeah. yeah. And now we're tied in with the CSI for the continuous service improvement, using mm. that dashboard to trigger the through service cycle. now. Yeah, yeah, back through to Archie to drive the uh, initiatives and then project. And then. Mm. You, so you am I hearing a New Zealand accent? Agile. Yeah, 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 that's definitely yeah. a New Zealand <laughs> accent. <laughs> oh, no. I'm in Queen, I'm a Queenslander, oh. but I've been living here too long. <laughs> I'm, I'm back on the 11th in Queensland, so I'm oh, okay. back over there. So yeah, because nice. my client is all Australian based, so uh, it's been a little bit hard with the daylight saving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it sounds quite um quite interesting. And yeah, so yeah, you like yeah. the the knowledge, data information, knowledge connecting all the yeah. dots. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what you're and, doing. Yeah, that's right, and and it's only penny drops with the business owners while the architects are always you know sort of been in that domain for such a long time um that uh the business suddenly says oh now i can actually talk uh architecture you know but in a business sense and the business and then the architects say oh now i can actually talk as if i'm a business owner because i understand what your objectives are who your customers are what the capability is that you're trying to provide and what so you're using a subset of the that. Archimate meta model. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Um, yeah, yeah. Connect yeah. up the bizbox with value streams. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. So that cool. all goes into yeah. the model, and then we import the model, the actual graphics, the hierarchical view, the sort, um, which is very rich in color. So we've got unique colors for business, for application, technology, for costs, and capability, mm -hmm. um, and then map that into Power BI, and that becomes then a clickable model. So you can actually click and drill down and say, okay, so what is this business service? Mm -hmm. Who's the owner? What are the key metrics that it needs to have? And then see those metrics, which are being pulled in from um, something like um, Azure Monitor or mm -hmm. SCOM or something like that. So it gives them that sort of visibility uh, near real time. And I think then, um, um, I... the costs. Yep. I'm super pleased, you know, that you've really been an advocate for Aki and various of the other things that people can just practically use and it's great like yeah. to hear. Yeah. And I do like to say to people, you know, there's a difference between a consultant and a trainer. And, um, you know, so Carl is sitting in that training and you basically do in some of that, I know Carl does consulting as well, but you looking at that, how to bring it into the organization. And this is what I say to a lot of the learners that go on the training as well. What, you, what you're doing is you fundamentally learning how to be a consultant. Um, and I think, yeah, Carl, you're a great teacher in terms of being able to help people get to that point. So Chris, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm so pleased to have a case study you know, to show how if you've learned, you know, kind of some of these very simple tools, um, you can actually make quite a big impact in your organization. So thanks very much for sharing that. And yeah, I think, um, Carl, from your side, I mean, that's certainly something you can help people 
yeah. and train people on um you know how to actually build that uh, for themselves and for their organizations so definitely so the power oh, bi piece as well. <laughs> yeah power, the power bi piece we used to build them in i server and mm. lean ix does a lot of that stuff on the fly so mm. um mm. yeah building all that sort of stuff is it's, it is the juice basically um mm. you're dead you're dead right um it's what the insights at the right level for people mm. to get um impact yeah so I, I think for those who are going into wanting to consult and wanting to work at senior levels but are a little bit nervous around tooling don't be um it's just you know we all had to learn stuff as we went along um but certainly it is worth figuring out how you want to present it i mean one of the big things we talk about in business architecture is what is the viewpoint so what is the view that a particular stakeholder would want to see um, and sometimes if you show them something like Archimate or even an Excel spreadsheet it's too much <laughs> you know it's like wow uh, too much information but um, from an architectural point of view it's great because then you can see it really quickly but then you can convert that into something else like Chris was mentioning you know your PowerPoint presentations or some other data point what do you think Carl? Yeah I I um have had it several times, and that was one of the reasons Linux and some of these things work so well, um, mm. is because you don't you hide a lot of that detail. Mm. You have to go through it because you, as a scientist, put your hand on your heart and say, "This is how it connects," um, and this is that we know how it works. But yeah, definitely mm. make visuals mm. um, easy. Um, mm. and, you know, even with even with Visio, you can program these things so that all the colors yeah. drive on timelines and all that sort of stuff. So I have plenty of those artifacts that um, you'll see. I even, mm. yeah, you'll even see them on, um, mm. yeah, around the traps on YouTube and things. So mm. very, very useful that just for the presentation layer to do some of those things. All right. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions anyone wants to ask, um, but we'll probably... Uh, call it a day soon um so now's the time to put your hand up if you have any questions or comment uh okay so just want to thank you Carl, and thanks for everyone who's contributed and asked questions um uh you know Carl is great to talk to if you want to know how to do something um in terms of your architecture so you know contact him on linkedin have a look at what he has on offer i think it's a really great Thing. It was certainly a gap that I saw in the training. Um, and this is why we've probably now been working together for about a year and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. It's been that yeah. long. Um, so, you know, really good trainer, really great resource if you are looking specifically to learn how to do something. Um, I think that would be very helpful. In terms of the architecture, I do think it's good to understand the language and the, the terms and everything. Um, you can't just dive into tooling unless, you know, willy-nilly, you've got to have some basis to work with. Um, but however you acquire that information, that's up to you. But just be be uh, aware of understanding what the notations and the backgrounds are with the um, as to why you're doing the tooling that you're doing. So thanks, Carl, um, mm -hmm. for sharing that. Um, thanks, guys. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you will find all of this helpful. Please do go onto our site and look at the free resources and free previews and all of those free webinars that we've done before and just go have a look and you'll find the rest of uh, a lot of information. Um, and actually, Carl's done this amazing post around um, strategy. Um so on one of our blog posts, he talks about how to actually use some of those models for strategy. Amazing, amazing job. So kudos, Carl. Um, Thank you. Well done, you. <laughs> All righty. All right. Thanks, okay, guys. Thanks, everybody. See I'm you again. In the session. Bye. All right.